Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about the dplyr lead and lag function. So as it is mentioned here that they are useful for comparing values by a constant that means the previous or next values. So basically the idea is that uh, you are at a current row within your data set. So maybe if I can take an example of uh, let's say head of iris so what we are basically saying that this is a particular row, row number one, where you have this data, row number two, and three, four, five, and six. And the idea is that uh, when I am at row number one, I have a requirement that I should compare the row number one with row number two, and the result should be on the row number one. Or if I am at row number two, I should compare the outcome of row number two with row number one, and then show the result in the row number two as an outcome. So this is sometimes very helpful in those kind of business complex scenarios where you need to really show the difference between let's say daily sales, monthly sales, or budget that you are spending on a monthly basis. So that helps identifying how much we are really exceeding or how much uh, fast or slow we are going based on the targets that we have. So this, with this kind of requirement, you can use the lead and lag function that is present in the dplyr. So let's first import the library, which is dply, let me correct it, dplyr. Let me clear it. And within the dplyr, let's try to get the inbuilt example, which is this lead 1 to 10 and then 1. So what we are saying that lead 1 to 10, we are creating a range and 1. Let's see the outcome. So what it is basically saying that the lead, the range should start from 1 to 10. And when it is at 1, it should increase by 1. That means 2, 3, 4, 5. And when it is 10, since the range is completing over here at 10, there is no 11 value. That's why on the 10th uh, point, you are getting nothing but any similarly if you say lead 1 to 2 comma 2 so the outcome will be as you would guess that it will start from 3 because what it is saying that in the list or in the range of 1 to 10 start from the second position and then go up till the last which is 10th position and show the values since the range is up till 10 you will get two any values for this particular function. So if I hit enter, as it is, as you can see, it is starting from three as we pre-assumed or suggested or guessed, and then at the end, two any values. So, so on and so forth. If I am saying lead one to 10 comma three, then it will start from the fourth position. So that's how you can basically say that uh, which value you want to really go to to identify or to basically start looking at within the column of data set so similar way you have lag in the lag let's say we starting from 1 to 10 and comma 1 so if you would guess it lag is basically looking at the last value and since the value range is starting from 1 and there is nothing which is before than 1 or prior to one then it will result first as any and then it will show us the entire list so n a and at the tenth position it is showing us nine because it is looking at one value back similarly if i am showing you two then also it will show eight and two any values at the start so that's the basic idea about uh, the lead and lag function now let's see quickly in the action Let's say we have uh, two data set. I want to create a maybe sales quarter and I would say Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 and sales value SV which is 2001. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's say 10,000, 15,000, 17,000, 
and again 15 thousand maybe all right so now let's go ahead and create a data frame which is nothing but sales and then we are saying data dot frame and we are passing these two vectors sq sv all right now let's see the sales well this is what the sales is based on the vector that we created in q1 we have 10000 in q2 we have 15000 in q3 we have 17000 and in q4 we have 15000 so idea is now we need to create one column beside to this and see with the help of lead how much uh, less or more we have for the sales value in each of the quarter as compared to the next quarter so for that sales dollar and i would say diff difference and uh, what i would write is lead and sales dollar sv comma one minus sales dollar sv and now if i see sales well this is the difference so it is going to the second 15,000 minus 10,000, you are getting 5,000. 17,000 minus 15,000, you are getting 2,000. 15,000 minus 17,000, you are getting minus 2,000. And since there is nothing after Q4, you are getting NA. So that's the basic uh, business idea or uh, you, know, you can think of a business reason why you would require it. Similar way, you can use the sales dollar diff underscore lag just to create an example of lag and what we will say is sales dollar sv minus lag so basically what we are saying is from current to previous just subtract it you can do it either way whatever you want but maybe i'm just showing you a different example because earlier we took lead as a first one and here in this case i'm showing you the lag as a value which is after the subtraction so sales dollar sv well even if you don't specify one you know it will by default take one as a value so if i do this and again see the sales so here in the first case it is na because there is nothing after before that and in the next case so fifteen thousand is the current value minus the previous value which is ten thousand five thousand is what you're getting here in this case 17,000 minus 15,000 what you're getting is 2,000 and here in the last case minus 2,000 because 15,000 minus 17,000 is minus 2,000 so that's the basic idea about it here in this case I have used the sales dollar diff uh, function oh, I'm sorry to create a new column I have used the sales dollar diff but in the previous videos I have shown you how you can use the mutate deep IR function so if you have if you are not sure about that you can actually go to this mutate and or to my previous video where i have shown you how you can define the mutate function so to add a new variable so what we have done is just adding a new variable but with the help of the basic method but i would like you to practice with the mutate function also because that will going to increase your skill set into the uh, r and specifically into the deploy or mutate function and just to show you where the video is that within the r video tutorial you can look for the how to create a new value with mutate function that i uploaded a week ago so that will help you understand how you can create a new variable so that's the main thing i wanted to show you about uh, the lead and lag variable and i would just encourage you to to practice it that will help you really understand in, in depth also if you want to go deep down you can uh, you can basically uh, see its description and figure out what else it's been given over here so that's pretty much all in this video and i will meet you in the new video with a new topic